victory. Good to see you. I heard you were spending more and more time in one of these. Do you fly? <laughs> no. I don't think they'd insure me. You should try. It's good for discipline. You have to stay within the rules, stick to regulations, suppress the ego. It helps with the racing. <laughs> there I was thinking you were about to wax lyrical about the romance of flight. No, it's all bullshit. So what brings you here? Friend's wedding. Or at least I think it was a wedding. Might have been a birthday or something. It's all a bit of a blur. How about you? Have you been at Fiorano? Your season testing. You're relentless. Thank you. I'm not sure that was meant as a compliment. When do you stop testing? Next week? No. Oh, what are you, nuts? I didn't just win the biggest thing in my life so I could get right back to work. Why? You have to. To prove to all the people who will always say you just won it because... Because of what? Because of your accident. <sighs> Snicky, is that other people or is that you? I won. Okay, and the all-important day when it came down to it, we raced on equal terms, equally good cars. And I put my life on the line and I saw it through. And you call that winning? Yes. The risks were totally unacceptable. You were prepared to die. To me, that's losing. Yes, I was. I admit it, I, I was prepared to die to beat you that day. And that's the effect you have on me. Uh, you'd pushed me that far and it felt great. I mean, hell, is, isn't that what we're in this for? To stare death in the face and, and to cheat it? Come on, there's nobility in that. It's, it's like being knights. <laughs> you English, you're such assholes. You know my position. 20% risk. No, 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 no Nicky, don't, don't bring the percentages into this. Don't be a pro. The minute you do that, you kill what's good about this. You kill the sport. I've got to go. Careful in this thing. James. You know, in the hospital, the toughest part of my treatment was the vacuum. Pumping the shit out of my lungs. It was hell. And while doing it, I was watching television. You winning all my points. Your points? My bastard hunter would say. I hate that guy. And then one day, the doctor came and said, Mr. Lauder, may I offer a piece of advice? Stop thinking of it as a curse to have been given an enemy in life. It can be a blessing, too. A wise man gets more from his enemies than a fool from his friends. And you know what? He was right. Now look at us. We are both a pair of kids when we met. Hot-headed jerks in Formula 3. Disowned by our families. Headed nowhere. And now we're both champions of the world. It's not bad, huh? No, it's not bad. So don't let me down now. I need you busting my balls. Get back to work. <laughs> I will, Mickey, I will. But I intend to enjoy myself first. The sum of life needs to be for pleasure. And what's the point of having a million cups and medals and planes if you don't have any fun? Now, how's that winning? I'll see you on race day, champ. You will, champ. Hey, you look good, Nicky. The only guy to have his face burnt off and it be an improvement. Of course he didn't listen to me. For James, one world title was enough. He had proved what he needed to prove to himself and anyone who doubted him. And two years later, he retired. And when I saw him next in London, seven years later, me as champion again, him as broadcaster, he was barefoot on a bicycle with a flat tire, still living each day like his last. When I heard he died aged 45 of a heart attack, I wasn't surprised. I was just sad. People always think of us as rivals. But he was among the very few I liked. And even fewer that I respected. 
He remains the only person I envied.